Hi guys, have you subscribed to this Donnie Dewberry channel? Well, I'm thrilled to come on and share with you lots of lessons, but to do that, I need you to subscribe and go to notifications and ring the bell so that you're notified when I'm coming on. I have lots of special free streaming lessons that are great for you to come on live with me. So please go do that and stay tuned for the lesson. Welcome to Relax and Paint this morning. I want to share with you that I'm using my double loader and the double loader comes with a lid that covers this and this lid. And so you can dampen the sponge, put it in here, close it, and what it will do will keep your paint fresh if you leave it to another day or to later. All right, because it's called a double loader and it's on my onestroke.com site, O-N-E stroke.com. All right, so then what I wanna share with you is I put in floating medium, this is textile medium, but um, the bottle looks like this, but it's floating medium. All right, this is the old bottle, floating medium. Now this is what we use with one stroke instead of water. All right, I also am using Oak Art multi-surface paint. So it does exactly what it says. It's for multi-surfaces, okay? So you're gonna love it. Glass, metal, ceramic, indoor, outdoor. It's wonderful, all right? So what's gonna happen is I put the paints next to the colors I'm gonna double load. So I wanna share with you how to make a fun little sign, all right? And sometimes if I know the word I'm gonna use, I put the word in first. But um, for instance, I can take a pencil, which I don't know if you see very well, or a piece of chalk, right? And I can write love. Okay. And that's what I'm going to. This is on multimedia paper. All right. And this is the word I want to use, and I placed it in there. I could have put it a little bit higher. All right, so um, what I'm going to do now is I take my dampened brush, lay it on the paper towel, and I'm going to work these two colors in. And I split the brush, pick up those colors. I teach you a lot of this in the practice stroke videos. So if you get a chance, please go watch practice strokes. It really, I give you homework if you really want to learn my technique. I give you a little um, tutorial and then everybody goes and works on it during the week. And you can send it to me on Messenger, Donna S. Dewberry, or put it on Facebook on our group, Donna Dewberry's official one stroke group. And then from there, we can critique it. So I want a little bit of yellow. See, now I split it here, but I don't split it here. All right, and I'm do a little bit more yellow. All right, so I'm gonna make an open blossom. Okay, lots of paint. I didn't use medium, let's see if we need it. If you have enough paint, you don't need medium. So look how pretty that color is. So what's happening is it gives you um, a really bright, vivid colors, a little bit more yellow. All right, now I'm gonna dip a little bit more white. Okay, and I can go right, let me put it over here so you see a little bit more. I can go right into this cubby. And let's get a little bit more yellow again on this side. Okay, so see, those are smooth. They're not wiggled like my traditional rows. All right, and I just want to make sure I can dip a little bit more white, flatten it. I can count in here a couple of times. 
and add a few more petals if I want. Or a little bit of shading. All right, now I think that gives us a real vivid, pretty color. And then I want to come down here on the bottom. And I want to do the same thing before I add the center. I want to pick up paint here, work it in here, and then dip the color. This keeps it a nice, see, I haven't used this yet. If I do, I just dip into it and come over here and work it in. This gives us a nice blend of color. I'm going to dip white. Apply. See how I stroke over it a couple times. A little bit more yellow. So, so it's a nice loose uh, move. Okay, so that needed a little bit more white. Okay. All right, now what I want to do is I'm going to wash that brush. And now I want to add some licorice in the middle here. All right, so I can use my small scruffy. This is my quarter. No, this is my half inch. Yeah, my half inch scruffy. And I'm just going to pounce it into licorice because that's the color we're on top of. And this brush is dry and you don't want to wet this at all. And this is only for pouncing, not for stroking. Because sometimes people try to stroke with this scruffy brush. These are natural hairs. All of these are synthetic nylon. So they spring up for me. And these are the natural hair ones. So I'm going to take off the paint by pouncing on the bottom of my basin. All right, and then I take my paper towel and I squeeze it at the ferrule, make sure that the paint's all out of it. And I fluff it again and put it to the side. Okay, so now what I want to do on these is take my script liner, my two script liner, where are you? All right, now while this is wet, I'm gonna bring some little pieces of it out. A little bit. So I just wanna just loose out here and not so exact. That from that wet paint, right? All right, now I can grab a little bit of white and put a little bit of the shading in there, and that make it nice. So this is dry. Dry brush, no wet, but then I'm tapping that thick paint on here. Okay. So now when you look at this, I got one at the top, one at the bottom. You know what? Before I put everything else on here, I won't be able to lay my hand here. So I'm going to show you that I'm going to pick up white paint. You can't use medium for this. You have to use water. And I roll my brush in it. Then I roll out. And I have the brush loaded with paint. OK, so let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to pull it down. So I pull straight down. And then I lift, 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 lift to get it thin. 
and then I can pull it back over. So, so what we're going to do here is we come across and then we go real thin. Now, we don't want to wipe the chalk off until we're all done, but I want you to see that we're going to have, oh, I'm shaking this morning, wait a minute. We're going to make it really thin. So usually when you're coming down, I messed it up. You're coming down a stick. So you can do all these downward strokes. All right. All right, so we're going to roll the brush in the white paint each time we get it. And then when we come up, we're doing it really thin. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. And that's not from, <laughs> that's not from caffeine this morning. There we go. And this right here, I should come back up, but I'm not doing too well coming back up. But I could turn it upside down and make sure when I come up, I'm thin. Okay, so downward strokes are heavier. And then when you come up, you're thin. Down heavy. Down heavy, up thin. Down heavy, up thin. Okay, so practice that. All right. Sometimes when people do their lettering, um, it messes up their whole project. So just remember there's stencils and things that you can use out there, okay? If you don't feel like you're good at it until you practice some, all right? So let's, um, we're gonna put some greenery in here now. And I'm gonna use my filbert brush, okay? So the filbert in the set is a size 10 filbert. And I have those also and the green handle brushes. The lavender brushes are my signature set, the Donna Dewberry Folk Art Worcester set. Um, the green are my student set, especially they're really good brushes anytime I've used them for years before these. But these are the two sets that I use. Um, the, green set has the dark green handles which you might have seen out there a lot all right so good and best those are the two <laughs> all right so my brushes are made different than other brushes that are out there so another flat brush is not necessarily going to be the same as my brush all right because i designed it to spring a certain way all right so i'm going to chisel and this is what I want you to see. I'm gonna push and lift, push and lift on the chisel of this brush right here, not flat. Flat, you can make pretty flower petals, but I'm on the chisel, all right? And then here, I'm gonna go one, two, three. One, two, three as you get bigger, okay? So that's not very much there. So I'm gonna put a stem. This is not what I would usually use for my stem, but it works for right now. Okay, so let's come way out here. And it's broken, broken, broken strokes because it's like a fern. So I did one, two, three at the tip. All right, then I'm one, two, one, two, and then remember I went to the three. One, two, three. And the difference in this and a flat brush is it gives you a round tip. And I still use a flat brush for that, but when I, I it's nice to show you other brushes that make it easier for you to get that look. Okay, so. I like to look at watercolor designs and play off of those. And I know this is not watercolor, but I like the softness of it. All 
Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing down here. I have these branches. See how they're not just one smooth branch. It's kind of choppy. And I'm just picking up citrus green. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't think I told you all that. So then I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then pull it through that stem. So it's just a type of greenery. I don't know that it's necessarily a fern or what it is, but it looks pretty, I thought. So we're going to make real skinny little strokes along here. Because this is not the same greenery. And that kind of fun. All right. So I'm going to stay down here. And I'm going to clean my brush out. You break it on the basin so that you get the, all the paint out of the feral part. Okay. So then this is magenta, wicker white, and daffodil yellow. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. Magenta, wicker white, daffodil yellow licorice, citrus green, and if I needed any, that was thicket. Okay, so now I'm going to dip some wicker white, and I'm going to come over here to Juneberry. This is fairly new color in the last two years, but I love it. Juneberry. Okay, so I can just grab a teeny bit of pink if I want. To get this nice lighter color. All right, so what I'm going to do is just tap, tap the tip. All right, so it just looks like status kind of. You know how status is a little dry flowers? Isn't that kind of pretty? Now I'm, I'm showing you this because I think. Many of you, even if you don't paint big canvases, would be happy to start with greeting cards. And greeting cards are, you paint them and give them away and you don't have them anymore to say, oh, I don't like the way I did that. And so the, also the good thing about greeting cards is people think you're an amazing artist and you'll get all kinds of compliments. And even people who say, I'm going to frame this. <laughs> all right. So I'm telling you, greeting cards will be your friend because you'll be busy making them and you will forget about the time and that your stroke's not perfect because it's smaller, okay? Now, I just want you to see that if you go to your craft store, you can find cards that are blank and cards that have pretty backgrounds, like scrapbooking paper backgrounds. And then I put my painting right on that. And I think you've seen me, I've done check before. Um, I've got ombre um, cards from Hobby Lobby and wait till they're 50% off. And so I end up getting 50 cards for $10 or less. And it's really nice. Okay, so now the most important thing, isn't that kind of pretty? The most important thing is that you come here and you sign it. So I'm going to use a little bit of the wicker white with the water. That's the script liners mostly when I use water. And I'm going to sign right here. Okay. And I hope you enjoyed that today. We'll see you next week.